This is my honest review of Tony Robbins Business Mastery. Now, when I aired the podcast about my honest review of Tony Robbins UPW, that episode, that was a couple of years ago, and that episode still gets so many downloads every single week. And I realized I had gone to Business Mastery in the last few months and I haven't shared about it. And I know how helpful that was for you in the first episode, and I'll link that in the show notes as well if you want to go check out that episode. But today I'm going to be talking all about business mastery. Is it worth it? Should you consider it? Welcome. If you are new to me, my name is Stacey Tushel. I help small business powerhouses get more customers through the door, more profit in their pocket, more happiness in their home through our signature method, well-oiled operations. And I am a big, big believer in going to events. I mean, I actually started, I really feel like I, I really kicked off my real entrepreneurial journey at my first ever conference back when I was 21. It was life-changing. And I have been I mean, an avid attender of, I mean, if, if you watch me on social media, you see I go to event after to event after to event. And here's the deal. Why do I do that? Because I get something out of it. Like I, I, I just, it's they're transformational. Okay. Now I know a lot of things. We're going to talk about this because I actually went to business mastery virtual. Okay. And I, I do want to cover the difference between virtual and live and all of that as well. Okay. So first of all, Let's just kind of dive in and I'll share. So this event I attended, UPW, I attended in person in Chicago pre-COVID. Now Business Mastery, I attended in the last six months post-COVID and I did attend virtually. Okay. Now here's what I'll tell you. Business Mastery has been on my bucket list for a long, long time. And one of the reasons I was held back from going or I allowed myself to be held back from going was it's a five-day event. And I have had two little ones at home, right? And I just never felt, no judgment here, but I personally never felt really that okay with leading for a full seven days, right? Because these are, I mean, if you've ever been to Tony Robbins, these are 12 to 15 hour days. Um, you're never like FaceTiming the kids in between. There is no in between. He jam packs them. There's not even bathroom breaks. You have to just leave the room. You literally sprint to the bathroom. And then sprint back into the arena. Like there is zero breaks. So for me, I just didn't feel I was in the right season to be able to leave for seven days and fully not see my kids. Again, no judgment. That's just how I felt. So when I realized they were virtual, I actually got excited because I thought, okay, I just removed two of those days from travel. I'm at home on virtual and I can leave to go see my kids if I want to. I can tuck them into bed for a couple minutes, right? It's way better than FaceTime for a few minutes at night. So I got really, really excited at the opportunity, okay? Now, the icing on the cake was virtual. I, I believe the event itself is 10 grand, okay? $10,000, um, which I've actually spent $10,000 on an event before for two days, and this was five days. So I fully believe you can get value out of an, an event like that, okay? But now that it was virtual, it was only 6,000, okay? So that was icing on the cake of like, and I'm getting the discount, right? And then... I will tell you, there is, if you've ever been to Tony Robbins, there's lots of dancing and jumping around, which I actually, as a dancer, you might think, oh, she likes that. I actually hate that. Like I, I, I'm into the choreographed dance, not just like the do whatever you feel like doing. I'm not an improv type person, right? So the cool part about it was though, and yes, I really did dance like a crazy person in my office alone. But the cool part was they allowed you to let the kids in the room. So every time my girls heard music, it was their cue. You can come in my office and hang out with mom and jump around. So it was actually like a really cool experience with my kids. And then they would, some of the kids would stay on, not the whole time, but you could see children on the screen. And I would let them stay and listen. And they would stay for a few minutes and then they'd get bored because they're little, right? I mean, at the time, uh, six and nine right now, this was just in the last six months. So very similar in age. They would leave, you know, after a few minutes, but they would still hear a few things, right? So um, I thought that was actually pretty cool. All right. Now, I'm going to share with you a pro and then a con of the event. Okay. I'm going to keep repeating that. At first, I had all the pros and then I had all the cons and I felt super negative. <laughs> And if you know me, I'm actually not a negative person. I'm very optimistic. So I was like, I am not going to do it that way. It just felt, it felt kind of gross to be like, and I hated this and I didn't like this and all the things, right? So I'm going to give you a pro and then a con, and then I'm going to give you my wrap up of would I do it again? And would I suggest that you do it? Okay. So first pro is Tony knows how to motivate you and just get you in this state. And, and if you don't even know what that means, it is something I've never experienced before. Like I feel so on fire, like I can do anything. Okay. And I definitely left the event 
on fire to get things done. Okay. Now here's what's crazy is I wear my aura ring, which tracks my steps. Okay. Day one, I had 30,000 steps and I did not work out and I never left my office. Now, if you're watching me on camera right now, like this is how big my office is. How in the world do you get 30,000 steps in? from dancing like a crazy person jumping up and down. Okay. He did a really good job of not feeling like it was virtual, right? He did a really good job of feeling like we were, we were in there in this room, all the things. Okay. So that's my first pro con. Okay. There was nothing I learned that I didn't already know. Okay. Now hear me out. I have been doing this for a long time. I mean, almost 20 years have I been in business. Okay. And with a title like business mastery, I was thinking there was going to be something that I had not, like the secret thing that I had never heard of that was just going to blow my mind and it was going to change my business. Okay. That wasn't the case. However, let's just rewind for a minute. 20 years of business, grew up in a family, small business my entire life. Okay. With my parents and my grandparents. And I have two seven figure businesses. It's not that crazy that I didn't hear something already, right? Does it make sense? Okay. So that is just, I, I, I do want you to hear that because there's a lot of people like me listening who've been in business a while, they're established, they're, they're really successful. And you might be thinking that there is some secret sauce you just don't know exists. And if you could have that, things would change. And like, let's be real, right? You probably already know all the things, you just have to do it. <laughs> okay, so another pro. There were a lot of good reminders of things I should be doing that I have already been taught. So yeah, I knew all that stuff, but was I doing it all? Was I doing it at the level I could have been doing? Right? Sometimes we forget the basics and foundations are all you need. And you just need to do them over and over and over again. Like whenever I go to an event and I have a different agenda of why I'm there and I'm not really there for the content, which might sound crazy that, that, that I do that. But there are some events that I do do that. And that could be a whole nother episode if that interests you. But when I go there and I'm thinking, I'm not here for the content. It's going to be very basic or newbie. Man, those are the ones that blow my mind because I'm going, I'm missing one of the basics. I'm missing one of the foundational principles. Okay. Con. This was my biggest con of the entire thing. <laughs> it was outside an outside group and homework that they gave you. Okay. I seriously hated this so much. And if there is, if you know why they do this or what the real strategy is and why I should have loved it, I actually think it wasn't for me, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I, that was just my mindset blocking me from the experience, but here's what I'll tell you. And I, I'll tell you this. I was the Debbie Downer of the group. Like I'm not going to lie. So we got assigned to maybe like five or six people and we had to meet daily outside of our 12 to 15 hour days. I'm like, what? Like, I, I don't understand. Are we just trying, are they trying to break us down? Like what, uh, what do you mean we're going to be here from nine to nine and outside of that time, we have to figure out when we're going to meet our team. I'm like, what is happening? Okay. So with this group, okay. Some people the, with, with the groups in general, you had to start a business and I'm talking like create a Facebook group, set up Instagram. Some people, some teams made money during the five days, I think the winning team made like $100,000 in five days with a fake business. Like what? Okay. So anyway, here is what the part, the, the thing that pe freaked people out. If you lost, Tony, he kept saying, you do not want to be the loser. And he's like, I'm serious. Like there will be a call out and you do not want to be that person. The other thing was this amazing prize for first place. Okay. And, and my team was like thinking like this prize was going to be something insane. I'm like, guys, I don't think that's the prize. Like I, I don't, like, again, I was the Debbie Downer. I was definitely the person you did not want to have in your group, um, which is not like me, but I think I was just so annoyed that like I wanted to leave that room and work on my business. And instead I was working on a fake business that didn't exist with strangers I was never going to speak to again. And in five days it was going to be over. Like to me, it just, it felt like such a waste of time. Okay. So. First of all, um, the winners won Tony calling you up virtually and he spoke to the captain about why they won and how they did it and all the things. That was the win. And then I think they got like a plastic trophy they're going to mail to you. It was really just kind of dumb. Okay. The losers, and I have to bring this up because you don't want to lose this challenge. They brought you up as the losing group and they, he basically was like, 
So tell me what you did wrong. How could you have been there for five days and not gotten anything done? Like how big of a failure (laughs) could this have been? Like he literally was scolding them. It was embarrassing. I was embarrassed for the losing team. Like whatever you do, if you go to this event, just don't lose. You, as long as you take second to last place, you're fine. You just don't want to lose, okay? Because it, it, I can't even imagine being the captain and having Tony talk to me like that and me having to answer how I completely was just a loser. Like, it was it was, it was, was bad. So anyway, um, here is why I think they did this, okay? Here, I, I'm a strategist, right? I'm always like, what is happening here? Because it really actually made my experience actually less then it could have made it even better, all right? Now, if I would have been in a room with established businesses who were like me, it would have been a very different experience. I was in the room with people that were just starting a business. So they would be like, does anybody know how to make a logo? Does anybody know how to make a Facebook group? Does any-? And I'm like, well, yeah, I can do all those things, but I'm not gonna sit here and go to Canva and make a logo. If I'm making a logo, I'm gonna assign it to my team. And then I'm like, my team has real stuff to work on. Am I really gonna interrupt their day to make a logo, right? So that's where I was like, again, I was just not the right person for this group. But here's what I believe they were doing. A lot of people at Business Mastery don't have a business. It blew my mind. It blew my mind. I thought I was going into this high level room with all these seven figure earners and people that are literally mastering their business. There are those people in there, but there are way more people making no money or very little money. So my room was basically filled with people that were like, th- like some of them were successful in certain areas, but they were starting something new. Okay. They were great people, amazing people will have a successful business or new business one day, but they were, they were starting more in the early stages of it. Okay. And I think if they would have paired me with a group of people doing the same thing, we would, that would have been a killer opportunity but that is not what happened. And I'm thinking, I am not here to sit and coach people how to build a Facebook group. Like that is not what I paid $10,000 for, right? So the reason I believe they did it was because the majority of the people in the room are new and they wanted to show you how fast you could build a business. They wanted to, you to see that in five days, you could get a Facebook group going. You could have an Instagram account. You could make money, which totally inspired some people in the room. I was just not that avatar. Does that make sense? And when you bring on something, this is such a tangent, but I I really want to have this hit home. When you try to sell to everybody and everybody is in the room, it's harder to please them. Okay. And what are you going to do? Are you going to please the higher achievers that are smaller groups? Or are you going to go to the mass group that isn't probably making money? Probably that group. Do you see what I'm saying? So it was just a little harder for me to connect. So if you're like, Stacy, you're such an idiot. You completely missed the point. I'm just like you. I had this breakthrough. Could you DM me? Because I would feel better if I could really take something away from the time <laughs> that I had to invest in that group. Okay. And I swear I'm the only one that hated it. So this is like, again, my very honest review. All right. Um, pro Keith Cunningham, who I had no idea who that was. Um, I, actually, yeah, I don't think I knew who it was, but now I remember He is, I believe, the supposed rich dad that Robert Kiyosaki refers to. So like when he has the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Keith Cunningham is his rich dad, which is kind of cool, okay? Because I've been following Robert Kiyosaki for years and years and years and um, like to hear who Rich Dad was, I thought was cool. So Keith was phenomenal. If, If this is the one area where I didn't know, this is it. He shared all the numbers you need to know. He shared about like the dials and what really moves the needle in your business. And he had this spreadsheet and examples and just watching him work these numbers was mind blowing. Okay. The things that I know that I'm not doing, right. This is, this is the section where I would say was, it was almost over my head. Like I needed my CPA there to be like, are we, are we doing that? Like, does that look right? Are we right? I just, I didn't even know how to relay that message to him. And unfortunately, We do not get access to videos. You are not allowed to record. If they've caught you recording, you'd be kicked out. So I don't have, I can't go back. So it's just my notes of my chicken scratch, right? Um, And I I unfortunately don't feel like I could even take enough from my notes to, to talk to my CPA about it. But it did show me there's more here. Now, I did go check out Keith's info and he has like a software and things like that. So this is almost kind of my con at the moment is Keith basically was pitching his software for us to go and grab it. Now, 
when I was watching Keith, I was like, I am in. Like, I am buying this thing. Like, we need this software immediately, okay? The con was, I remember when I went to check it out, I was blown away by the cost of what this software would be. And it's an ongoing permanent expense that you will use in your business like the rest of your life, okay? So I didn't move forward. I would love to maybe even have my CPA check out his software to be like, what could we do here and how can we take this away and what do we need to be doing where I'm already paying for my CPA and maybe we could implement that there, okay? All right, um, pro. I will say I did walk out of there so much more decisive and committed. Before Business Mastery, I had been going back and forth on something, a goal that I had set. And it, it was really in disbelief that I don't think I could hit it. So it was like, is this my goal? I don't know. I don't think we're going to hit that. So maybe I should go with a safer goal. But I really want that goal. But I don't think that's possible. And but I and I just kept I kept doing that. And let me tell you, indecisiveness is like the worst quality to have as an entrepreneur. <laughs> and I hate when I can feel I'm indecisive and I'm just like, just make a decision and go. Like literally, I'm I'm shaking myself, going, pick one. Like it's better to pick one and go on a mission than it is to be pulled back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, right? So I will tell you my biggest pro of being in that virtual room was I committed. And I just made the decision and I left there with the bigger one and the belief that I could hit it, the confidence that I did not have before. Now, would that alone be worth the $6,000 I paid? I mean, considering the goal was more than 6,000. Yes. Okay. So we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. I don't want to go there yet. My last con he pitched Business Mastery 2, which I actually did not know there was a second one. Of course, I knew he was going to pitch me something, right? I assumed it was like Platinum Partners or whatever. Um, he pitched Business Mastery 2, which was all of the stuff that I kind of thought I was going to learn in Business Mastery. So I didn't buy at that time. And to me, I felt like I had enough stuff to implement before I was really ready to dive into something else, Okay. Now, that is a dangerous thought to have for 99% of the people that are listening. There is the 1% of you, like me, we are implementers and we get things done, right? But sometimes a lot of business owners have the list of things to do. They've got the notebook of what to do, but they do not have maybe the accountability or the level of commitment where they don't need accountability. So I just did a VIP day with one of my clients and she said, we know what to do. We have a list of what to do. We're literally paying you to help us put it in the right order and confirm it really is the right order to help us go as fast as possible. Okay. Most people need that. So when I say I did not buy because I had stuff I could still do. I am a master implementer. I mean, I literally wrote the book, The Implementation Code. <laughs> okay. So trust me when I say I can say that and feel good about that because I can also tell you we have implemented a lot of things from Business Mastery. Okay. If you're going to conferences or you're buying coaching programs and you're not doing things, don't have that dangerous thought. Okay. All right. So one thing I will note is I could have paid the full $10,000 still. It was actually an option. And you could have gotten the virtual event with a, a, a six-month group coaching program or mastermind or something for six months, okay? I'm not sure what it totally was, but I will tell you I, choose, I chose not to do it, and I'm actually really happy I didn't, okay? So here's the deal. I said no because I was already in other programs. Okay. And I was like, I don't need another mastermind. Like there's no way. And oh my goodness, after seeing the people in the room, I actually probably would have been even more irritated. It would have been like the five day homework assignment for six months. Right. I don't, unless they would have put me in a room with people earning the same kind of revenue. Now, when I say this, I do not want you thinking I am better than what I am saying is it's a different conversation. When I am in a room with somebody who's starting a business and we're talking about, does anybody know how to start a Facebook group? That question would never be asked in a seven-figure room. The question would be, does anybody know who I can hire 
to run a Facebook group. Like that's the kind of stuff we ask. And, and it's just, it's different. So you've got to be in the right room for it to benefit you. What I have learned as somebody who is frequently in rooms where I am sometimes at the top, I have learned there is a time and a place for me just to give back. Like I, and that maybe that thought could have been there for me during those five days. I was not at a place to have that thought, but a good thought could have been Stacy. This is your opportunity to give like people who gave to you 20 years ago. Cause I walked in that room as the newbie and I had all these incredible mentors just help me for free because they were nice and they wanted to give back. And maybe as a 20 year old entrepreneur, it's my time to suck it up and think not every room is about me. Maybe it's for me to give back. Maybe it's for me to share. Maybe it's for me to pay it forward, right? So that's kind of my learning lessons from that, okay? However, my point here is I actually did hear from people that the coaching program was kind of a bust and the virtual event was like 10 times better than their experience. Like they kind of set the tone with the virtual program and people were not loving it. And then when they jumped in the virtual event, they're like, oh my goodness, this was so much better. I'm so glad I, I, I did stick around for this, okay? So I am happy I did not invest in the coaching, but I am really grateful that I, I did the event because I do believe, um, I know I've already made my money back. Like, like $6,000 is not hard to make. Like, let's be real. Like 6,000 sounds like, oh my goodness, like, how am I like, am I really going to spend $6,000 for two days or for five days? Like, that's a lot of money. But when you walk into that room, there's a million options on how to make $6,000. Like when people come to my programs, if anybody has hesitation to come into foot traffic or to come into well-oiled, I'm like, this is the cheapest thing you will ever see. Like, there is no way you will not learn how to make your money back and then 10X it, right? So... For me, it was an easy amount of money to invest because I have made that back and I will continue to make it back. So one thing that's really cool is we're about to head into um, our employee team retreat next week. And we did actually pick one of the spreadsheets um, that they had, like an activity they had, and we are taking that activity and putting it in to our employee team retreat. And the spreadsheet is all numbers and money. And we are going to strategize as a team how to probably make like a couple hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So that alone could be worth the six, that could 10 X the six K investment, right? That could like a hundred X the six K investment. Okay. So, so I do believe, even though I have some cons, I'm giving you an honest review, right? I do think for me, it was valuable. I, I personally wouldn't buy it again as a second time, but I'm happy I bought it for that first time. If I were to go back, I would buy business mastery too. Right. Um, so here's the thing. Here's what I want you to know. Although I have some cons, it is my responsibility to look for the pros and to make my money back. I cannot blame Tony Robbins for anything or for any speaker or for it. I have to take full accountability. And there is no way I'd be able to walk into that event and not make that money back or to multiply it. Okay. So here's what I, I have learned in the last 20 years. Immersion is a part of mastery. It is a must. Okay. I just did a thought model. I might do a whole podcast on this. Actually, it was really, really good. I did this thought model and I, I put this number in the result one that I want to achieve on a monthly basis. And when I did that, I then said, what are the actions I'm going to have to take to get there? And it was just like, immerse, immerse myself, focus, right? Like just go all in, play full out, right? I'm definitely gonna do a podcast. It, and now I'm just like sparking this. It was so, so good. It, it was something I didn't before, right before I went to bed. So my point is here, if you're not immersing yourself in what it is you're trying to do, don't be surprised when it's not happening as fast as you want it to happen, okay? I will also say to you that I have listened to a million Tony Robbins like all of the things, right? His books, his podcast, like everything. But there is nothing like buying, investing in a thought out program or event, right? It is so much different than just like catching a podcast or reading a book or, right? It is truly like giving you like the A to Z 
And I, I, I really believe in that. Okay. It's in a specific order. It was strategic. There was mindset. There was motivation, right? There was like motivation purposely planned with like some of the hard stuff. Like there was so much in there to strategically designed. And like, we're planning our powerhouse leadership events coming up in October. And I'm doing the same thing. It's like a puzzle piece. I'm, I'm picking my speakers out and I'm going, okay, if she's going to talk on this topic, put her like right here. If he's going to bring up this well, this is motivation. So put this after something that is going to be a little bit more tactical where they might be thinking like, oh man, that's going to be hard. But then if we motivate them after we think it's going to be hard, they're going to be motivated to do it. Do you see what I'm saying? So if you're just picking bits and pieces here and there, it's just very different. Very, very different. Right? I'm still saying, yes, listen to the podcast, read the books, all the things, but you want to immerse yourself um, where you can actually step away from the desk and be there and, and, and just be fully into it. Okay. Um, that's what I'm gonna say. If you're not taking time away from your business to get out of the day to day and just be open and, and look for that next like golden nugget, you're missing, you're missing it. Okay. So I hope that was a, a good, honest review for you. I didn't sugarcoat. I was pretty honest, but I think I was also respectful. Like that's another thing. Please don't go bashing people when you're doing this. Um, Overall, I would do it again. If you're, if you've been, if it's on your bucket list and you want to think about it, go for it. Um, they have virtual and in person is back. So you can decide what you want to do specifically. Uh, what's a better fit for you. Okay. If you're looking for another event to attend and you want to check out our powerhouse leadership coming up in uh, October, this is learning from me, my team, other high achiever, six, seven figure entrepreneurs in the room. We've got speakers, we've got panelists, um, we'll have breakouts. Um, you can come solo or you can bring anyone from your team. So this is going to be not just for you, but it can be for your right hand as well, your leadership team. It's pr a purposely planned in October. We're going to be strategically planning with the time of year in October. It'll be perfect for us to go, okay, let's plan out the rest of Q4. And then let's set up the plan for 2023, like get those initial steps going in place, really gathering that data from 2022 to figure out what can 2023 look like, right? Using that information, you'll step away from your day to day and you'll immerse yourself in these next level trainings. You're going to leave motivated. We, we've got so many tactical speakers, but you're going to have notes of things to do. And then you're also going to pair with that motivation and that mindset. So you truly believe you can do it because without that belief, that confidence, you just won't. Like I told you, I was sitting on that goal forever. And then I finally had the confidence to say, I'm doing it. Like, let's move forward, right? So you're going to leave here finishing Q4 on fire and really finishing Q4 at the highest level you could possibly have ever imagined, okay? As well as getting your business to operate as a well-oiled machine, all right? So if you, you want more details on this event, if you want to hear what it's about, just DM me on Instagram at Stacey Tushel. I'll send you over all of the details. Early bird pricing is, is going to be going away soon. So if you want to make sure to get in on this, buy your ticket now. People have been asking, will you have a virtual event? Um, we are not going to be live streaming this where this is going to be where, where you can come for that virtual experience. We want you to be in the room. Don't worry. It's only three days, not five. Um, but... Um, for those people that buy that um, that specific ticket, there is a, a, like a there's three tiers of ticketing. If you get the lower level ticket, you will get access to the recordings. So if you're like, I'm just going to buy the recordings, you'll obviously want to tell us, hey, I'm not coming in person, but I do want to get access to all of this. And we will mail you out or we'll email you out after it's over links and you can watch everything. OK, the only reason we're not promising it live streaming um, is because it's just that's not the experience we're creating. We are we are creating an experience in that room and we really want to entice people to get in that room. OK, immerse yourself. All right. I hope you like this review. If you have an honest opinion and you want to comment below wherever you're watching this, reading this, listening to this, I would love to hear what was your honest review. Like this is just my opinion. You can't please everybody. OK, I'm I'm also a little hard to please in some situations. So that might was my honest review. I hope you enjoyed it. And if I would love to hear your honest opinion as well. All right. See you soon.